If you take a look at Asar Thompson's numbers through his first four games, you'll find an unassuming 8.5 points, 32% from the field, 14% from three, and while it's true that the offense has a long way to go, in that box score you'll also find 10.5 rebounds and 2.5 blocks. If you just look at his game log, you'll see that this isn't some outlier, but a consistent trend. Three straight games of double-digit rebounding, three or more blocks in two of the matches, and at least one in all of them. Asar's been more than impressive on the defensive end, and the type of stuff you'll see him doing on a game-to-game -game basis, even against elite offensive players, will make you forget that he's just 20 years old with virtually no NBA experience. It all starts with his aggression on the ball, applying constant pressure as far out as half court. On this one, he's quite literally not giving Zach Levine even an inch of room to operate with, and in order to create some space, it requires an illegal screen from Vooch. It's the same thing inside the arc, getting real low and crowding the airspace of DeRozan and dealing with this sort of pest just takes offensive players out of their comfort zone. The reason Asar can get away with applying so much pressure on the ball is because of his agility. A lot of times you'll see defenders get overzealous and that leads to blowbys, but he's so ridiculously quick laterally that he can almost always beat attackers to the spot. This time Levine has the step and tries to use Thompson's momentum against him by slamming the brakes, so the rookie follows suit and remains right in front of him. Then Zach's gonna throw a crossover as he explodes downhill on a drive, and Asari uses his lower body to shut off the middle, forcing him into an angle that's going away from the basket, and gets a hand up on the tough fallaway. That lateral quickness allows Thompson to cut off any and all attempts at driving the ball. Shea first looks to set him up with his signature size up and change of pace, but doesn't get anywhere, so he pulls back, then leverages the threat of a drive into another step back, but Asar doesn't bite and perfectly times his contest, making that an incredibly difficult shot. In addition to the agility, he also happens to have a 7 foot wingspan and impeccable timing meaning that when he does shut off any downhill attacks and ball handlers instead look to score over the top, he's pretty much always going to get a hand up and really lower the shot quality. He also gets off the floor and to the peak of his jump as quickly as anyone, so in the event that his man does get the step or blows by him in space, he's capable of altering their attempt at the rim. The rare combination of length timing and vertical pop is absolutely amazing to watch around the basket. I can't remember the last time we saw this type of shot blocking capability from a wing. And even when he's not directly making contact with the ball, that threat is always there. As Shea gets into his finish, Asar's way up in the air looking to target the release and he has to adjust his shot to an awkward angle which doesn't even come close to dropping. I actually think Thompson bothered Shea individually as much as I've seen from any defender. He had an amazing stretch of possessions in the second quarter against OKC where every single tool was on display. It started with this isolation early in the offense. Shea uses his change of speed to get by Asar's hip on a left hand drive and the 20 year old not only stays attached and gets back in front, but takes off vertically to completely obliterate a floater. A couple minutes later, it was a real similar setup, except this time with the help of Isaiah Joe setting a ball screen. Asar sneaks over the top of Joe like he's not even there to beat Shea inside the arc and cuts him off as he draws an offensive foul. Here's another one where Shea's initial angle gets taken away by Asar's agility, so he pulls back to start again from the elbow throwing a couple hesitations and up fakes, but not able to shake him, then when he falls back on the bump midi, he gets called for a travel from the pivot. Next time down, they decided to try a more traditional setup, with the big man Chet Holmgren setting a ball screen, but when he slips prematurely, that allows Asar to stick with the ball, slide in front of Shea's drive, then use that vertical pop and length to completely smother a turnaround jumper. 
Because of how well-rounded Thompson is as an athlete, Detroit's able to deploy him at the point of attack versus pretty much any type of ball handler. Here's another one against Shea, who appears to get the step going downhill, and we know he loves to create separation with the use of shoulder bumps, except Asar just absorbs that to his core while holding his ground before attacking the ball with his length. He's also really good at dodging screens to stick with his man, this time making himself skinny to sneak over the top and not giving Levine any chance to attack. But even when he does find himself behind the play, that athleticism makes him devastating in rear pursuit, getting back in front of Zach as he steps back and sending away his mid-range jumper. Another thing you'll see with Asar at the point of attack is that he has a good understanding for which angles to take around screens. Instead of trying to get over this one, he knows that he can dart under it to get back in front of the ball near the paint. But when Jalen Duran picks up for him, he's going to stay in front of the basket to secure a rebound. Here's another example where his big does a good job of picking up the ball and he seamlessly peels onto the roller this time reaching a hand into the passing lane to force a steal. Now, I wouldn't say he's necessarily someone you want switching all the time or anything, but I do think he can play up a couple positions when it's absolutely needed, depending on the matchup. So, you've got this 6'6 six six wing who moves with the agility of a small guard, has the length of a big, and can explode off the floor vertically like an all-time shot blocker but also has the processing speed and technique to get around screens and apply immense pressure at all times. That, to me, sounds like a pretty impressive defensive player, and we haven't even gotten into what he's capable of doing away from the ball. For one, I think he has great instincts for just knowing when and where to position himself as a helper. He starts this one at the point of attack as his man drives and kicks it to the corner, but instead of falling back, he hangs around the paint, then quickly moves to the baseline to make himself tall, and turn what could have been a layup into a heavily contested pull-up midi. Here's another one just like that, roaming off of his man in the paint so that he can make a rotation to the baseline and sticking out a hand to make a play on the ball. He's able to cover so much ground in such little time because of that cat-like quickness, bouncing from threat to threat like he's bound to some sort of gravitational pull. This time he's in the strong side corner, and they say not to help from just one pass away, but when he slides down to tag a roller, he's so fast that he can still effectively close out to his man above the break. Because of that shot blocking ability I earlier mentioned, when he's sliding down to the basket, he can be a pretty big rim protector. You can see that his head is on a swivel as he protects the weak side, and as soon as he senses a threat in the paint, he's springing over to the other side of the court. In just a split second from when he first rotated, his head is nearly touching the rim as he swats away a layup and secures the rebound himself. Even when he does have those inevitable mental lapses, falling asleep or getting caught watching the ball, his amazing physical tools enable him to make recoveries that most guys around the NBA just simply can't. Here's one where Jimmy sneaks right by him on a baseline cut, and there's a good few feet of space between them by the time he realizes, yet still he's able to close the gap and spring off the floor to block a reverse lay only for Butler to get a second chance, throw a couple up fakes, and try again, which also gets sent away by Thompson. That was Asar's third block a minute and a half into his NBA career. I don't think there's a better statistic I could possibly conjure up that perfectly defines the type of defensive playmaker he already is and what kind of potential he has on that end of the floor. The frame, the athleticism, the IQ, the motor, and effort, it's all there, and from the very first moment, he made it abundantly clear that his lockdown defense is no joke. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Thompson. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.